Homeschooling isn't always picture perfect. Welcome to Homeschooling with Dr. B, where we'll help you find solutions to the challenges you face and celebrate your successes with you. Now, please welcome your host, Dr. B. Welcome, my Tenacious Homeschool Tribe. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the mistakes that we as parents often make for a couple of reasons. Sometimes we make it because we have dreams for our children. And sometimes we think we know our children better than anybody else. But oftentimes we tend to make this mistake out of fear. When I was a college professor, I oftentimes found myself encouraging students when their families would not, especially their parents. Their parents would tell my students that they shouldn't be attending college because it was a waste of time and money. They were not capable of reaching whatever goal they had set for themselves, and they couldn't possibly handle that specific challenge. My own mother became very frustrated with me many, many times because I wasn't satisfied with her dreams for me. She wanted me to be a secretary. And I did, in fact, become a secretary. That's how I put myself through college after my parents divorced. But she wanted me to be satisfied with that. And she would say things to me like, why can't you just be happy as a secretary? You have a good paying job. Of course, a few years later, secretaries are primarily a thing of the past, right? But back then, gosh, I can't believe I'm 55. Back then, secretaries were still seen as a good job prospect and as a good, solid career. Now, I didn't listen to my mother. I used my money that I earned being a secretary to help her with my siblings after the divorce, but also to pay for my own college education, which at the time was very challenging because we didn't really have online classes and universities didn't typically tailor their programs to working individuals. Okay. The assumption was that you were going to be 17, 18 years old and you were going to be able to go full-time to college. Your parents were going to pay for it. But of course, that was not the case for many of us. Many of us had to work. So it took me a long time to graduate. When I started homeschooling, I didn't think I was going to find that type of situation. Parents discouraging or limiting their children because in homeschooling, we spend a lot of time tailoring education to the specific needs of a child. But I found that I was facing the same type of situation as I had with my students. For example, there was a mom I met that didn't really teach her child any of the core, meaning she didn't really emphasize math or grammar or literature because she was certain that this child was going to become an actor. Of course, she's neglecting the fact that the best rounded actors are actors that are either highly educated, such as Angela Bassett, uh, Natalie Portman, Jodie Foster, or actors such as Tom Cruise that struggled during high school, but continue to educate themselves throughout their career. Additionally, What if this child wasn't a good actor? Or what if this child decides we don't want to be an actor? Because let's face it, at 10, you don't know who you're going to be as an adult, let alone what your profession is going to be, or if you're going to keep that profession long-term. Because many of us, myself included, change professions several times during our lifetime. Another story that just really touched me was of this mom that was working two jobs to pay over $40,000 a year in dance lessons for her child. And this child was a very good dancer. 
But this child was also extremely, extremely heavy. And I don't know about you, but I haven't seen many professional dancers that are heavy. And by heavy, I'm thinking this child BMI was at least, well, let's just say this child was at least 60 to 70 pounds overweight. She was extremely physically active. And in fact, she went to several auditions and she never got the part. And the reason that she never got the part was because she was so heavy. And they would tell her during the auditions that this was a problem. But mom still continued year after year paying $40,000 for this kid to become a professional dancer. By the time I was no longer around the family, the child had turned 18 years old and she actually decided that she wanted to be a nurse. That's where her real passion was. Mom was not supportive of this. She wouldn't help her financially to go to nursing school. She still wanted her child to be a dancer. So what's the problem here? The problem is that we often underestimate our children. And it's easy to do. It's really easy to do when you have a child that has challenges or you have a child that expresses a specific interest and they seem really passionate about it. But we forget We forget that children are young and they haven't experienced or haven't been exposed to many, many things. So how do I keep myself from making this mistake? Number one, I really encourage my children to explore different things. My children have been to science camps. They have been to acting camps. They have been to singing camps. They have been to surfing camps, martial arts camps, many different camps. They have taken many extracurricular activities. In sports, soccer was a big one. And I know that they're looking forward to exploring baseball next season. And I have a kid that has taken a lot of classes, but right now she's really into baseball. And this is definitely one of the benefits of homeschooling. We can give our children the opportunity to explore their interest. But at the same time, we should push them into exploring things that they're not necessarily comfortable with or that they might be just a little interested in, but are not fully committed to. And sometimes it means allowing a child to participate in something that we don't understand. One of my daughters recently asked me if she could take a puppeteering class. I looked at the cost of the puppeteering class and I was like, no, she could be taking a science course. She could be. And I started listing all these things. So my initial reaction was, nope, absolutely not. I'm not paying for this. And then I thought of Jim Hansen right? He's the creator or the co-creator of the Muppets. And of course, he participated in Sesame Street. And I thought, who knows? Maybe she'll take this puppeteering class and she will be the next Jim Henson. So despite my gut reaction, my initial reaction being an absolute flat out no, I changed my mind. She's entitled to explore this. And just because I don't see a future in it doesn't mean that there isn't. I'm limited by my experience. And I'm also limited by the fact that I'm an introvert and I'm a person that likes consistency. But I was thinking about my husband, who's an extrovert, who likes exploring all these kinds of different things, who has all these different businesses. And his parents always told him he was not going to be successful as an entrepreneur, but he has been extremely successful. So who am I to tell my child that she shouldn't take a puppeteering class because there's no future in it, right? So next fall, puppeteering, here we come. I'm allowing her to explore that, even though I don't understand it. 
Number two, I keep reminding myself, and this is very important, that their interests are not fixed. They haven't had time to explore many things in this world. And for example, I had one child when she was young. She was absolutely interested in medicine. My husband got her a stethoscope and all this medical equipment. Then she decided she wanted to be a singer and she has an amazing voice. Just absolutely amazing. You should check her out on Facebook. But here's the thing. Now she wants to be an attorney. Things change. She's been exposed to the law. She's been exposed to political science. And she's thinking maybe that is the way she wants to go. So she's just turned 14 and she's already changed her mind three times. And she has many more changes to go. One of my other daughters, she wanted to be a neuroscientist. Never mind that she didn't like science and never mind that she didn't like blood. She didn't like squishy stuff. So we encouraged her. We allowed her to explore it. And then she came back and she said, you know, I think what I really want to be is an entrepreneur. But again, she's 14. Who knows what she's going to be? My other child, she wanted to be an engineer more than anything. Her biggest dream was to get into MIT. Then she decided she really wanted to get into robotics. Then overnight, she decided she wanted to be an actress. She's a pretty good actress. Check her out on TikTok. She's Andy dot cosplay. But now she's decided she's really interested in forensic science. They change. As they are exposed to different things, their interests will change. In fact, the average freshman, the average college freshman changes a major five times. And this is a good thing. It can really frustrate parents. But it's a good thing because it means that they're exposing themselves to different things and they're finding the one thing that they're going to be passionate about that they feel they can do for the rest of their lives or from which they can branch off a living for the rest of their lives. Number three, I never tell my homeschooler or any child for that matter that they're bad at a subject. I really try to focus on praising them on the subjects that they're good on. Reason I do that is because it allows them to maintain confidence, to keep their confidence flowing. And since they're confident, they continue to work on the subjects that they're struggling with. And when they have successes, whether they're big or small, I really praise them. I also find that sometimes It's not that the kid can't learn, it's that we're not teaching in a way that the child can learn. My aunt is really good at math. But OMG, there's days where she asks me a question 50 different ways. And I don't know how to answer it anymore. But I know that once it clicks, everything will fall into place. So sometimes I find myself hiring a math tutor to help me understand a problem from a different perspective so that I can teach it to her in a different way. And things change. Emmy used to be really, really good at creative writing. I don't know if it was that she lost interest or what it was, but she became a better technical writer. Andy, on the other hand, was an extremely good technical writer But she became an incredible creative writer. And in each case, I always encouraged their accomplishments. I always pointed out the challenges that they were facing. But every time that I pointed out a challenge, I gave a compliment. I did everything I could to fill their love bucket, right? Or their confidence bucket. Which, trust me, is not always easy to do when they're frustrating you. And I get that. Don't put yourself down if you weren't able to do it or if you got frustrated. Just keep it in the back of your mind and keep trying to do it day after day, time after time. And if you can't and you're conscious that you're getting really frustrated, give yourself a timeout. I don't tell my kids, mommy's giving herself a timeout. Don't talk to me right now. 
I need a little break. And then I come back when I have a positive attitude. Number four, and this is a big one for me. I don't allow my dreams for my children to imprison them in unreal boundaries. They are unreal because they're my dreams for them, not their dreams for themselves. And our children are really more than our perception of who they are right now and who they're going to be in the future. I remember my mother once getting enough money together to pay for one of my sister's college semesters. And when I said to her, why are you helping my sister, but you won't help me? She said to me, because you're not smart enough to go to college. Now that's not true. I have an IQ in the gifted branch. What is also true is that my sister, the one that she was talking about, her IQ point is Mensa range. I mean, this girl is an incredibly smart human being, but she wasn't interested in college. She just wasn't. She's a blue collar worker. That's what she does. Me, on the other hand, I was not as gifted as her, but I was always interested in college. I have a PhD. My other sister had ADHD, dyslexia that went undiagnosed for decades. And my mother always used to feel sorry for her and worry that she wasn't going to amount to anything. She's a nurse. So our perception of what our children can do is not always accurate. But it also works in the opposite direction, meaning Sometimes we feel that our children can be things that they cannot be. I know a parent that pays an incredible amount of money to get her child singing lessons. This child's the sweetest child and she really enjoys singing. She has a terrible voice. She's terrible. In some cases, talent does play a role. Now, It's completely different to support a child who has an interest, but you have no long-term expectations or unreasonable expectations placed on the child. And this mom that's paying for the singing lessons is expecting her child to become a professional singer, even though the teachers keep telling her the child simply doesn't have that kind of voice. So one of the things I've noticed is that with time, the child's enjoying singing less and less because of the undue pressure that's being placed on her. So on the one hand, we should allow our children to explore and find themselves and support them in their interest and their dreams. On the other hand, we should not put undue expectations on our children based on our dreams or perceptions of them. Remember, a fish doesn't fail because they cannot climb a tree. So to wrap it up, instead of focusing on your dreams or fears for your children, always support their interest in their dreams. Definitely avoid making comparisons between your children or your children and other people's children. Compliment your children when they are doing well in their interest, even if you don't understand that interest. Use positive reinforcement to encourage them anytime that they're being challenged. And never forget to share your power with your children, especially as they are getting older, giving them the option to choose different books, to help work on the schedule for homeschooling or for extracurricular activities or both. Never forget that there's more than one way to teach the same thing. Don't forget, not everybody's going to be a scientist. Not everybody's going to be a singer. Our job as parents is to help our children find their talents and their passion, right? A fish can't fail because they can't fly. And a bird cannot fail because they cannot swim. Whenever possible, include the three E's in your projects, engagement, enthusiasm, and encouragement. It's part of the joy of being a homeschooling family. Believe me, 
despite the fact that I said I never wanted to homeschool through high school. And despite the fact that I was originally reticent with my children, at least two of them wanted to continue homeschooling through high school. I am excited. I'm looking forward to it. I give my kids four more years and then they're off to college to explore that big, wide world on a greater scale. Don't forget to join our sometimes challenging but always rewarding homeschool journey by subscribing to our blog, YouTube, or podcast channels. <laughs> if you're new to the show, please check out some of our older episodes. I touch on some things that you might find interesting. For links and resources, please visit our website. Till next time, enjoy your kiddos. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Homeschooling with Dr. B. Head over to homeschoolingwithdrb.com for more information and resources. That's homeschoolingwithdrb.com. Until next time.